The conventional wisdom around how students are using technology and social media s tends to be they're becoming more insular, less social, um, and, 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 and withdraw. My experience, though, has been very different from that. I, I see a generation that is more social than my generation ever was, that are more connected to what's going on, that, that are very interested in things and are talking about th those things all the time. We can't judge them simply by what we see on Facebook or Twitter. They spend a lot of time with each other talking about a lot of different things. And that, that surprised me because I was buying into that conventional wisdom that this is not a good thing because they're all going into the basement and they're never going to come out. They have no social skills. Their, their skills of discourse, of uh, their ability to articulate uh, concepts and ideas, their ability to multitask, their brains are being wired differently. And here's what happens if you're, if our brain and our generation is wired one way and a new generation, their brain is wired differently. And that's, that as brain research clearly says, different connections are being made. So we look at it and we think, holy mackerel, in our, looking through our lens, this looks very different and troubling. But I would argue this is evolution at its very best. And what I'm seeing in the 20 to 30 year old today is exciting for me. It's powerful for me. And I have no trouble whatsoever in believing that this generation will do a better job and is better prepared and better equipped uh, to lead this world out of the hands of the baby boomers. And what's very interesting and in what I observe in their behavior is that my kids, they don't see color. They don't see, they're shocked that it even comes up. They don't see sex. You know, whether gay and lesbian or transgender, that's not an issue. They don't even talk about it. It's completely unimportant to them because they believe in acceptance and understanding. And so, you know, this liberal education, you know, why aren't they down to the basics, you know, the reading, writing, and arithmetic, what's wrong with these kids? Well, boy, they're very well equipped to be the social leaders that we need in the world. And I go against that. And I often talk to faculty about it because they come and say, oh, they can't pay attention and they don't understand. Well, you're looking through your lens, right? And, you know, you're in bed at 10 o'clock. Two in the morning, they're still thinking and working and doing all the things that they do. And just because your paradigm doesn't fit their paradigm doesn't mean that you need to make them like you. What you need to do is understand the difference and then encourage it, water it, watch it grow and be positive about it. And just because it doesn't fit your view of things doesn't necessarily mean it's worse. So stop thinking that they're different and because they're different, they're not as good as we were. They're, they don't pay attention like we do. They have surpassed us in so many ways. And I think it scares the hell out of us, quite frankly, as we uh, enter our sunset years. I believe that we're Lots in the discussion hands. about uh, how we incorporate technology. Social media has been a huge, uh, a huge uh, issue in institutions from faculty saying leave everything at the door and have everything off to other faculty who say everything's wide open. So there's the same battle we had with the calculators when they came out in mathematics. But here's what's different and I've been following technology for many years. I, I wrote a program in BASIC in 1979, a random story idea generator for my grade 8 class who, whenever I asked them to do some writing, they said, well, what am, I, what am I supposed to write about? I can't think of anything. So I created this little program and it really encouraged them to, uh, to, to want to write. So I, I've been involved with technology and I've seen how it's changed and how it can impact teaching and learning. But here's what's different. There has been a shift in the type of technology that we use from Twitter to Facebook and what it's, what's, what, what it's caused is a complete lack of deep thinking in people. Uh, immediate reaction to everything and putting it out there without having thought it through and thought about the implications. And this is made real in my life every day. I have, I have two uh, children in their 20s. Uh, both are, uh, uh, one's fully ensconced in a career in Ottawa with the government. Uh, my daughter's just beginning um, a, a job at Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. They're very active in Facebook and Twitter, and I follow them, and as a dad would, just to kind of see what's going on, and I worry. I worry about the digital trail they're leaving, and I often remind them that, you know, you're reacting to things immediately, and you're posting immediately, and you're not thinking it through. 
what are the consequences of what it is you're going to say, and how might an uncharitable mind use that against you at some point. So you have to start paying attention to how this media is used to ensure that you don't cause significant life's damage uh, in, in your future. So there's that part of it that I really worry about, and it's a trend towards immediate gratification to no deep thinking and no thinking about the consequences or the implications of what you say or write. So that's, that's what I worry about and how that technology is being used in our world uh, for politics or for, or for families. I mean, you can, you can be bankrupt at the speed of light, you can now get, ruined. you can quit a relationship in 30 seconds, if you wish, by simply changing your status on Facebook. That's probably not a good way to treat each other. And I worry about the vulgarization of our society through the use of this kind of social media. Now having said that, um, I love it as a teaching tool. So there, like, it's like everything. There's, there's, uh, there's, the, there's the good that can come out of it and if you use it for evil then I guess you're going to pay a price. How it affects post-secondary though is really interesting. We still in 2012 are still stuck in a paradigm of a, a professor being the imparter of knowledge and information. We have to shift the way that we deliver and teach using technology. It can enhance, but it will not ever replace. So the professor needs to become more interested in helping students through the application and synthesis of, of information as opposed to the information itself because you can look it up in five seconds. So memorization it doesn't make sense anymore. No exam should ever have require memorization. If you want to learn the difference between fiscal policy and monetary policy, then the question in the exam is not define fiscal and monetary policy. It's okay, how do you, how would you apply fiscal policy to a to a problem that a country is having uh, with balancing their budget? That's what's important. So technology can enable that, and a lot of things a lot of the things that we're starting to see is that flip, where your homework becomes your schoolwork and your schoolwork becomes your homework. So don't come to class and let's, dis let's, let's read or let's, um, you know, let's, let me give you some information. You can do that. You can capture lecture. You can, you can go online. You can read it as many times as you want. Now you come back to classroom and it's about application of what you've read or learned. It's discussion. It's talking about what you've learned. It's about sharing what you learned. It's not about repeating what you learned. And that's where we have to shift. So technology is both an enabler uh, and a destroyer. And we have to be very careful, in, particularly in education, that we use these tools appropriately. But we also make sure that students are aware that deep thinking, reflection, is a critical part of being a human being and being a contributing member to society. And the impulsiveness of immediate gratification, whether it's verbal, or physical is not, it will cause incredible damage to families, to institutions, to provinces, and to countries. Think about uh, uh, this last election, and uh, a big question in our debate was why aren't the youth engaged and why don't youth vote? And youth are very busy, and it, sometimes they feel um, powerless. Other times, and I really believe this, it's a matter of convenience. So, what would happen if we moved to online voting? where everybody who was over 18 could vote online. So now students with their smartphone or their iPads or whatever it is that they have, all they now have to do is vote from their smartphone. That could fundamentally change politics because I believe youth would vote if it was as convenient. And I know some people are going to say, well, why can't they get off their butt and go to the polling pool like the rest of us? Well, quite frankly, I don't go to a bank anymore either. So what difference does it make? If you want people to vote, then you should make it as easy as possible for people to vote. And my view is students would vote if they had access to a technology that would enable them to vote in a quicker way. And I think that if they all voted en masse, it would fundamentally change politics. We wouldn't be having discussions around things like conscience rights. It just wouldn't happen because they wouldn't accept it. It's not acceptable to have those kinds of conversations. So we can engage them by finding ways to let people vote. And I think not only for youth, I think everyone. I think the 57% voted in this past election. The last one was 41%. You want 100%? Give them access.
from where they are. You know, at the end of the day, I think uh, we, we get wrapped up in trying to compartmentalize and define people and identify trends and point our fingers at people saying, oh, that's bad and they're getting worse and we were different and all of those kinds of things. I think at the end of the day, everybody, given the, the right set of circumstances, opportunities, uh, an environment in which they can learn and feel loved and respected, I think most people are going to turn out, uh, turn out pretty good. And I think we spend a lot of time worrying about different groups of people and how they're going to how they're going to turn out. I'm very optimistic about the future. I'm very optimistic about the new generations that are coming behind us. I think they're very different uh, from us in a very powerful and positive way. I think we've been good teachers to our children. I think we have every right to be proud and optimistic about the future and a little less wringing of hands and worrying about things. Uh, I think would do us all a bit of good. Um, I totally agree.